All right, geometry students, today you get a two for one. We get nine four and nine five in one lesson. So 9.4 is the compositions of isometries. So an isometry, please write this down. An isometry is a transformation, like a translation, reflection, or rotation, that preserves distance or length. So the shape you started out with at the beginning, you still have at the end, but it's just translated, reflected, or rotated. Um, theorem 9.1, the, the composition of two or more isometries is an isometry. So if you do a translation or a reflection, um, you translate it and reflect it, you'll still have an isometry at the end. It'll still be the same shape no matter how many of these in a row that you do. The three types of isometries we've studied so far are reflections in a line, like a mirror, rotation about a point, we did that last lesson, and a translation where we just scoot it over. Um, here's a fun thing, which letters in the lowercase alphabet are transformations of each other? So what type of transformation is it? So we look uh, like A, B, I don't know, I don't know. Well, um, I know one for sure. He's like hopping out at me. Um, it is P, P, U, and P, Q is a reflection. One second. Right, put my mouth down. So reflection. And then we look and oh, but uh, kind of like BD is also a reflection. Like BD, okay. BD, I see you. I see you, BD. Um, BD, so let's ignore C, <laughs> is also a reflection. Can you see any other? Um, either reflections, rotations, or translations that we get, that can get us from one to the other. What about N and U? Isn't U an upside down N? So if we rotated N 180 degrees, what? That is insanity. Um, you guys look through here, see if there are any others. Is there, there's obviously not one just shifted over. Um, it'd be nice, like, oh, like, what if I, no, they're not the same shape. So take a look. This is just a fun thing to do. Try it with a capital alphabet. Write the capital alphabet on your paper and see if there are any transformations in the capital alphabet or depending upon which font you use, um, it would be nice to say, well, V is like a W, but um, in, in this particular case, like my W is too skinny to be um, in a V. All right, so uh, example two, I'm sorry, composition is a combination of transformations. And the way we um, write compositions, it is like we go from the inside out. So as we get, um, when we come down here and, and talk about these, you'll, you'll see what I mean by inside out. We're going to match the composition with the diagram. The solid figure, I like these because they look like a little Star Trek insignia. I know, I'm showing my true nerd. Um, <laughs> This little beam me up, Scotty. Okay, the solid figure is the pre-image of the dashed figure. So this is the first guy. Here is this after the first um, composition. So that's our second guy. And then our second um, transformation gets us to this third figure here. So um, from here to here to here. So from here to here to here. Okay, so if you look at A, A has a um, translation, then it has, and then when we do compositions, 
you put this little like this little O, this little baby O. He kind of looks like a degree, but he is down lower than where we usually put degrees. Um, and then we go inside out. So the first, um, so we're going to take our figure. We're going to translate it first, and then we're going to reflect it across line M. So you guys, reflection is a big R across line M. And that's going to get us to this third figure. So we want to find, and then uh, let's look at this guy. So this guy is like, oh, so here's where we start the first one. Uh, well, I'm going to put this down here, and then we'll um, figure this out. So we start with our figure. And the first thing we're going to do, let's, we're going to rotate it around point P. And remember the rotation? 180 degrees around 180p. P is, it's comma P. All right. It's the same terminology. P of our figure. Okay, so we're rotating at 180 degrees around P, and then we are translating. It's not a reflection. If it was a reflection, the long side would be over here. So it is a translation. So we're going to Remember when we do our composition, um, I think of it as we take this little O in composition and put it um, in the middle. So we're, then we're going to do a translation. And I don't know how much it is. It's just a distance. Okay. Um, and then finally, we look at our final figure. So let's go figure. Put them in parentheses. He has a reflection across line M. Remember, reflection is big R. Um, across line M, and then he is combined with a rotation of 180 degrees around point P. Okay, remember the little O here means composition, so it's like the combination of two things. So we look at our um, compositions as the transformation that goes first happens closest to the figure, and the transformation that goes next is on the outside. So it's like going from the inside out. Okay, so which one had the rotation about point P and then a translation perpendicular to line M? Oh, yep, this one. It was B. Translate parallel to line M. And then a reflection across line M. Oh, that is a, and then reflection in line M, it's got to be C, <laughs> and rotation about a point. Yay! Okay, so that's how you kind of put together the terminologies we've been learning in the last few sections. Okie dokie. Let's try example three. What is, and remember we go inside out, so we're going to start with J. We're going to reflect it across line L, and then reflect it across line M. So we take, um, I'm going to use my, I'm going to use a line. So we're going to take this line. Uh, I'm going to pull it perpendicular. So it's going to go. And then, um, this, is, this is trickery. It's, uh, you guys are going to have to eyeball it on your own paper. Um, I want to preserve the distance. So I'm going to preserve this distance. So from the distance from J to L is going to be the same distance from J to uh, L, the line L to J prime. So um, you guys are going to get to see my amazing skills. Um, so let's go, we want red. J. I know I'm killing it today. Okay, so here's our J. Oh, he looks so good. Okay. And then we are going to reflect him across line M. So, so we got <laughs> the distance. So let's get another line. Let's preserve the distance. Um, 
from J to M. Oh, we're going to go off the page. All right, technology power. <laughs> I know it's not fair. <laughs> um, so we're going to take this line um, and preserve it from here to here. Preserve that distance. And then my new J will be over, it'll be J chilling over here. So good at drawing these. I know. You're so impressed. Okay, so here's J prime. I'm gonna call this J double prime because he had two translations. So alrighty. A glide reflection is a composition of a reflection and a translation. Ooh, that sounds fun. Let's go ahead and do some of those. Find the following glide reflection. Um, we're going to take triangle TEX and translate it uh, down five and then rotate it around, uh, or sorry, reflect it across the line X equals zero. So um, let's go ahead and put TEX on our graph. So T is at negative five, two. Hmm, hello buddy. I see you. And E is at negative one, three. Okay, you're on the board, E. And X is at negative two, one. <laughs> All right, and it is a triangle, so let's go ahead and put our size on it. T, E, X, triangle. Um, I am going to give him some solidarity um, so that when we fuck with him, maybe he'll, he'll go all, he'll go willingly. Okay, so we're going to translate him five units down. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. I will, um, let's give him some other dots here. And just for fun, so you can see where we came from. I'll, um, I'll put a copy of him back up so we can keep. Oh, there's our original guy. So um, this guy down here is going to be our uh, first piece of this uh, glide reflection. And then um, we're going to uh, reflect him across the line, x equals 0, which is this one right here. And remember, when we we did this last um, lesson, when we reflected across line uh, x equals 0, the uh, y-axis, our x's stay the same and our y's will reverse. So um, because we are that, ooh, that crazy, because we're that kind of student, we're going to put these coordinates here. Um, so this was x, and it is now negative 2, comma, one, two, three, four, negative 4. This was e, we're going to call him e prime, and he was at negative 1, 3. He is now at negative 1, negative 2. And this is t prime. He used to be at negative 5, 2, and now he is at negative 5, negative 3. Okay. Um, so now we're going to reflect him, and uh, it'll be fun. So uh, I I know I know it's cheating, but don't let's let's do an inventory. So our uh, let me get this color. So uh, T double prime is going to be the same X. And the y coordinate is going to change. It's going to be opposite. E double prime x coordinate is going to stay the same. Y coordinate is going to change to the other 
for us it's positive in this case. Um, X is negative 2, and the Y coordinate is going to be positive. So when we um, reflected about the uh, X equals 0, we are going to end up at negative 5, 3, negative 1, 2, and negative 2, 4. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so let's put, um, let's line that out. And it really did flip to that on its head. So this is negative 5, 3. E is, oops, it's this one right here. Negative 1, 2. And X, double prime, is negative 2, 4. So this one was like, woo, but then it reflect. And that's called a glide reflection because we slide and then we reflect. Glide reflection. So it slid all the way down to here and then it reflected. Well, that was fun. Thank you guys for going on that adventure with me. Um, take a moment right now. Complete the 9-4 practice. It is the worksheet um, within the packet that you guys were given. Um, check your answers. Make sure that uh, you label those coordinates. And let's move on to 9-5. Remember, this is a combination one. Okay, 9-5. Congruence transformation, two figures are congruent if and only if there is a sequence of one or more rigid motion that maps one figure onto the other. So remember, rigid motions means it doesn't change the size or angles. Um, so we are going to look at shapes and determine if they are congruent. For each pair, describe the sequence of rigid mo motions that map one figure to the other. So let's look at, well, I know that these A, B, C, D does not go with uh, M, N, Q. So I know the triangles are going to go together, and I know the um, parallelograms are going to go together. So um, let's go A. Oh, let's get a pen. Which pairs of figures in the grid are congruent? So let's go uh, quadrilateral A, B, C, D is going to be congruent to quadrilateral H, I, J, Okay. Make sure that you guys, when you answer questions, especially on your test, you um, look at what the question is asking and give it the answer um, that it wants. Like it says, which pairs of figures are congruent? Tell me which are congruent. Um, some of you guys, that's an easy, super easy step to miss. Um, and then we have triangle M and Q, and it is going to be congruent to triangle U, V, W. The triangle there. Okay. So for each pair, describe the sequence of rigid motions that maps one figure to the other. So let's go ahead. Um, let's start with A, B, C, D. At the end of this, it's going to equal H, I, J, K. But let's put the translations here. Remember, we go inside, out. So what did we have to do to get point C down to point J? Um, we didn't... We can um, just do a translation. We don't have to shimmy, shuffle, or rotate. So um, we're going to go translation... And let's put what we translate. We went over one, two, three, four, five, six. So six to the right. And then down one, two, three, four, five. Down five. So if we translate A, B, C, D, 
over 6 and down 5, we get H, I, J, and K. All right, the next one is a bit trickier. I'm going to erase this so we can see it a little bit better. Um, because uh, I look at, okay, this is kind of like the pointy part N goes with V. So the first thing that happens is, oh, we can kind of, if we reflect this, um, across the x-axis, so across, uh, sorry, yeah, the x-axis, then um, we can get it oriented in the right way. So m is like one unit away here, so it's going to be one unit away here, uh, m prime, and then n is four units away, so it's going to be four units away here. And then Q is three units away, so it's going to be three units away here. And then if we um, put our lines in, we can see that it is now oriented the same way as our uh, UVW. Yay! So we did a reflection, so let's mark that on our... Um, Let's record that. So triangle M N. It looks like a Q. Is that an O? I've been calling it Q, but I guess there's no harm. <laughs> I guess the next letter in the alphabet after uh, N is O, so we'll make it an O. No harm, no foul. Um, gets us to triangle U V W by a reflection. across the x-axis. And then it is going to be combined with a translation of, okay, let's count and see how far over we move this guy. We'll, we'll use the end to, to guide us. One, two, three, four, five, six. Translation of six. And oh, up or down, nothing, because it goes straight over. Woohoo! Are there other ways that other transformations you can put together to get here? Yes, there's not just one. Um, there's, like my dad says, there's an easy way and there's a the hard way. Um, but if you take a different path but still get to the same place, um, I will be looking at, when I grade your papers and stuff, I'll be looking at your translations and rotations and see if they make sense. Even if they're slightly different from what we do, that doesn't mean they're not right. All right, example two, what is the transformation that maps NAV onto BCY? So N goes with B. We can pick a point um, to kind of guide us. So N goes with B. So if you look, N is on top here, B is on the bottom here. I think we need to reflect it first. So, um, Let's put together our terminology. Okay, so we're going to reflect it first across the x-axis. So when we do that, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. We get this little shape here, and now you can see it's oriented the right way. Woohoo! Yay! I love it when a plan comes together. So now it's oriented correctly, and all we need to do is shift it over. So let's see what our, um, we're going to do a transformation boop, 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 of one, two, three, four, five to the left. So that's negative five. And we are not going up or down to zero. All right. So you guys, it, it takes a little bit of vision to get to the right spot. Um, but the more practice you do, the better at it you get. Um, okay, that is all for lesson nine, four, and nine, five. Go ahead and do the practice worksheet. 
for 9-5. Come back here, check your answers. See if you got what I got. It doesn't necessarily, there are a couple different ways um, to do this. So you may have a different um, combination than I do. And don't feel, if you're right, it doesn't have to be the same as long as you're right. So just double check. All right. And that's all for this lesson.